Welcome to the Freeland Writer's Eye Spotlight Talks for YouTube. Before we begin, I encourage you to use these videos interactively. When you are prompted to observe, pause the video and look carefully. When the educator asks a question, feel free to pause the video again and discuss your observations and ideas, making sure to address what you see that makes you say that. We're excited to share these videos with you and read your Writer's Eye entries. Enjoy! Rhinoceros is a woodcut print by Albrecht Dürer, German painter, printmaker, and theorist of the German Renaissance. Let your eye wander over the image to look closely at the details. Direct your attention to the head of the rhinoceros, noticing small details in the skull and the horn. The strong pointed horn on the tip of its muzzle almost looks like a sharpened stone. I'm also interested in the jawline and what looks like shells or mushrooms protruding from that jaw. What do you notice under the creature's mouth? I see a long, sparsely haired beard. If you look along its forehead, it seems to grow a line of spikes and skin folds like the shell of a lobster. I think the hard plates make the rhinoceros look like an armored soldier. What does the rhinoceros remind you of? Do you know what a gorget is? I didn't until I saw this image. Look carefully at the neck of the rhino. Those bib-like layers? Those are sometimes called gorgets, or the protective neck piece on a suit of armor. Now I think this rhinoceros is ready for battle. Let's move on to the legs. To me, they look like the scales of a reptile, especially a snake. What do you think? Unlike a snake, the rhino's legs stand sturdily like heavy stone pillars. There is so much detail in this woodcut print. You could count every single hair on the rhinoceros's body. What details do you find most interesting? If you had to describe this rhinoceros for a friend, what descriptive words would you use? When I was reading about this print by Albrecht Dürer, I was really interested to find out what the text on the top says, and to learn about the real-life rhinoceros that inspired this print. When translated from German, it reads, on May 1st, 1513, was brought from India to the great and powerful King Emmanuel of Portugal, to Lisbon, such a live animal called a rhinoceros. It is represented here in complete form. It has the color of a speckled tortoise, and it is covered and well covered with thick plates. It is like an elephant in size, but lower on its legs and almost invulnerable. It has a strong, sharp horn on the front of its nose, which it always begins sharpening, when it is near rocks. The obstinate animal is the elephant's deadly enemy. The elephant is very frightened of it as, when it encounters it, it runs with its head down between its front legs and gores the stomach of the elephant and throttles it, and the elephant cannot fend it off. Because the animal is so well armed, there is nothing that the elephant can do to it. It is also said that the rhinoceros is fast, lively, and cunning. When you hear that written description, what ideas do you have? To me, the text creates an image of a fierce battle between a rhinoceros and an elephant. The use of language like rips, gores, fear, and deadly all help to conjure that image. There is another exciting story tied to this work of art. In the 16th century, trade and merchant ships were the vehicles of colonization. Portuguese sailors first arrived in India in 1498 and set up a colonial state in India shortly thereafter. In January of 1515, the Portuguese colonial governor in India sent a gift to the king in Lisbon, which is the capital of Portugal, from the Sultan of Cambay, which is a state in India. It was a rhinoceros. The Indian rhinoceros made a huge impression when it arrived in Portugal. Its fame spread all the way to Germany, Spain, France, and Italy. 
The animal was examined by scientists and scholars, and a written study of the rhinoceros was shared throughout Europe. German artist Albrecht Dürer learned about the rhinoceros and created this woodcut print without ever seeing the animal. After the sensation the rhino caused in Portugal, the king, Manuel I, sent the animal to the Pope in Rome. Unfortunately, the rhinoceros died on its way across the Mediterranean Sea. Can you imagine what it must have been like for the people in Portugal to see a rhinoceros for the first time? What if you had only read a description of the creature in a letter? Could you write from the point of view of the animal, leaving its home in India and traveling all the way to Europe? What other stories might you tell inspired by this work of art? We're all looking forward to the day when we can gather safely at the museum. Until then, please reach out to the Education Department with any questions or feedback. Our email is museumoutreach at virginia.edu.